Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Holly makes a concession at Jude's christening, Leo breathlessly blazoned that he'd commodity important to say. Leo, what are you doing? Sloan asked. What I should have done from the veritably morning, Leo said. The clerk asked Leo if he preferred to make a private concession, but Leo refused. This is commodity I need to say in front of everyone, Leo said. With gashes in her eyes, Sloan shook her head no at Leo, quietly contending with him not to mention Jude's true lineage. I have been to a lot of interrupted Salem marriages, but a christening? Nicole rumored to.j.j. Jounced in agreement. Leo, do not make me lament inviting you, Eric said. J. Offered to have Leo arrested. Jude fussed, so Melinda handed the baby to Sloan. Leo goggled at the baby for a moment. What I neglected to say, well, the verity is, Leo stammered. Leo looked over at the statue of the mama and child, and he suffed. Well, I did not expose that I'm covering moments blessed event for the society runners of the spectator. Thus, if anyone has any expostulations to having their snap being taken, speak now, or ever hold your peace, Leo said. Sloan suffed with relief, but appeared shaken. The clerk asked if Leo was done. While at the bottom, I would also like to say I know a lot of people then have suffered losses. Speaking for myself, I lost the love of my life. Not to death, but still, my heart pangs for him and always will. Nicole Andy. J. Lost their baby. Which was a terrible loss. And I know that's just the tip of the icicle of losses that people gathered then moment have suffered. But precious baby Jude, who's being nominated then moment, has his entire life in front of him. And that brings us stopgap. And I'm recognized to be his puck godfather, Leo said. Two godfathers for the price of one. He's one lucky sprat, Brady said. With gashes in Melinda's eyes, she managed to smile. Everyone clapped, and Leo breathed a deep shriek. Sloan handed Jude over to Brady, and Eric lit a candle. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you, to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He's to walk always as a child of the light. May he keep the honey of faith alive in his heart, the clerk said. Overwhelmed, John rumored to Marlena that he demanded to step outdoors. Marlena followed him. Why do not you go back outside? I am okay, John said. John admitted that he'd been uncomfortable in the house of the Lord after what he'd done. But is not this really the stylish place? God's mercy has no bounds, Marlena said. Marlena reminded John to concentrate on the blessings of the day. Forget about your own pain for right now. Just for the one day, you know? And if you can not do that for yourself, also perhaps you can do that for me, because it's veritably hard to see you suffering, Marlena said. Marlena argued that if Constantine could forgive John, John could forgive himself. Inside the church, the investment concluded, and Teresa left to visit Tate. Across the room, Marlena roughly pulled Leo to a corner to ask him about the trick he'd pulled. All's well that ends well, Leo said. Nicole Andy. J. Told Holly that they were headed home for the party. I will see you in a many, Holly said. Reluctantly, Nicole jounced and left, wife. J. Holly lit a candle. Eric saw Holly, and he promised to meet Sloane and Melinda at the auto. As the women walked out, Eric took advantage of the empty church to talk to Holly. Outside the church, Leo ran into Sloane and Melinda. I smell a lecture coming, Leo said. While I'm veritably thankful you did not blow our baby exchange secret sky high in the middle of Jude's christening, how should I say this? Are you insane? Sloane said. Leo admitted he'd been overwhelmed by the position and the sadness on Nicole's face. I was impelled to do right by Nicole Andy. J. Leo said. And Tilly. J. mentioned calling the authorities, and you realized how important trouble you would be in, Melinda growled. Leo agreed that had been part of the reason he'd abandoned his concession. Sloan added that Leo hadn't allowed. 
about how the concession would affect her or Melinda. Melinda said that Leo had easily not allowed. About the fact that he'd lose his mess ticket if the verity came out. I glanced at Nicole and aloud. About that glum teen Holly and what a hot mess she's turned out to be, and I allowed. It might be stylish for everyone if I kept my mouth shut. So, I did, Leo explained. Sloan and Melinda goggled daggers at Leo. Leo promised not to be tempted again to expose their errors. Inside the church, Holly was in gashes. What's it? Eric asked, however, will you promise not to tell anyone differently? Holly asked, if I tell you commodity. Eric noted that indeed though he was no longer a clerk, he could keep Holly's confidence. Holly admitted that she was shamed of her secret. The night that I owed, I am 100 sure the medicines I took were not Tate's. Because they were mine, Holly confessed. Eric told Holly that he wasn't there to judge her. I promise I will not tell anyone. But I contend that you tell your parents, Eric said. Holly refused. Tate indeed said I shouldn't, Holly added. Confused, Eric asked Holly if she believed Tate would prefer to stay in a halfway house rather than have Holly tell her parents the verity. Holly argued that she was lying to cover her mama. Eric told Holly that Nicole was strong enough to hear the verity. You are in agony, all because of this. Tate is suffering because of your jest. Eric said. Holly agreed. Eric advised Holly to tell the verity both for Tate's and her own sake. As Eric hugged Holly, Sloan returned to remind Eric that they demanded to leave for the event. At the halfway house, Tate read audibly from his journal about how he should have told the verity about the medicine overdose from the morning. I prevaricated because I do not want, Holly, to get in trouble. And also the only bone. Who gets in trouble is me, Tate said. Tate wondered audibly why he'd told Holly to keep lying for her mama's sake. I know why. Because I wanted her to suppose I was this completely selfless person, Tate lumbered. Tate scarfed, and he called himself pathetic. I've no bone. To condemn but myself, Tate said. Tate murmured that he hoped his family said a prayer for him, because it would take a phenomenon to get him out of the halfway house. When Teresa arrived, Tate asked her about the christening. Teresa noted that Jude had done well and that Brady had been a proud godfather. He is gone now be a great bone. Tate said. Teresa encouraged Tate to tell his father that. Why? Is it because he thinks I am a screw-up? Tate asked. Teresa heaved. No, it's because he thinks he is, and we both know he isn't, Teresa said. Teresa argued that Brady was a good pater. With a grin, Teresa showed Tate a print of Brady holding Jude. As Tate started to scroll through the film land, Teresa asked him if he was looking for prints of Holly. Tate said he'd been looking for a print of Teresa with Alex. Actually, we broke up, Teresa said. I did not know. It's because of me, is not it? Tate asked. Teresa assured Tate that he wasn't the cause. You're my precedence. You always would be. Alex and I, we took a break because of a lot of reasons, Teresa said. Tate asked Teresa if she intended to reunite with Alex. When Teresa asked why he was interested, Tate admitted that he didn't like to see Teresa alone. With a mime, Teresa said she didn't know if she'd get back together with Alex. As Tate looked through the film land, Tate noted that Nicole appeared upset in the prints. Teresa agreed, and she said that it had to have been delicate for Nicole to attend a christening after the loss of a child. Outside the Demera manse, Nicole stopped at the spot where she had spread the ashes of her son. You doing okay? EJ asked. I knew it was gone knobby hard, watching Eric and Sloane denominate their son after just losing our little baby. But I'm glad that I showed myself I could get through it, Nicole said. E. J. Called Nicole heroic. Nicole sniffled back gashes. My whole thing was to not fall piecemeal, and I suppose I managed that, Nicole said. Nicole thanked E. J. For allowing her to throw the event at their house.